Hi there, I'm Barb. I want to have how to get creative.com and today we're talking about what is a stencil. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes when I start looking through my supplies, I discover something. I discover I'm positively obsessed and addicted to something that I didn't even realize. Stencils <laughs> are apparently one of those things. So anyway, as I was preparing to record this for you, I discovered that. So uh, you're going to see what I mean because you're only going to see a small portion of what is in my creative space. Let's take a look right away at a stencil. The stencil in its most basic form is a piece of plastic. This is like a commercial stencil. Um, it's a piece of plastic that shapes have been come back, cut out of. This one happens to be five by eight inches. Um, this one is a Diane Reevely stencil, and this, you know, has different shapes and then also a border. Now this came just as the stencil. You'll see some others that come different different ways here in a minute. Sometimes they come in square shapes like this one. This is by Prima, and sometimes you'll find them in a square format. Different companies produce different shaped stencils, and it's honestly, I have to admit, it's nice to have them in the different shapes and sizes because if you do any kind of mono printing with a gel plate, a gel press plate, or a jelly plate, um, or any other kind of mono printing sort of thing where you use stencils, they're nice to have the different sizes for the different plates. But anyway, yeah. So here we go, back to the stencils. They also are available, these are all commercial stencils. These are available in size 12 inches by 12 inches. Let's see if we can see right up here. It says 12 by 12. And um, those are nice if you're working on large format paper like scrapbook paper or mixed media paper that comes in a bigger, bigger sheet. But again, this is a piece of plastic that has had the shapes cut out. Now, the shapes that are cut out sometimes work really nicely as a mask. So, for example, uh, sometimes you buy the masks as standalone things like this one. This was just like this. Um, so we're going to talk about just the standalone masks that you can buy. So this is like the piece that was cut out of the stencil but it really works nicely because it has an irregular edge. You can do all kinds of cool stuff with it, but most often when you see them with an irregular edge, it's going to be classified as a mask. Here's another one. These are little, the balls are bits, which are just tiny little masks. These are great to use when you're mono printing. Sometimes you find masks that are big. This is a 12 by 12. Um, and you can, again, tell the irregular edge. Everything is very irregular. It doesn't come with that square or rectangular shape. This is cla You could classify this one as a stencil or a mask. Um, I tend to think of it more as a mask because of the irregular edge on it. Now, you can also, companies are doing some cool stuff now that they didn't used to do, and that is producing the stencils and the masks in one. So if it's appropriate with the shapes, more companies now are giving you both. So you can use this as a stencil or when you clip out these pieces and the, uh, when the masks and the stencils come together, there are always little tiny tabs, plastic tabs holding the masks in place. So you need to use a pair of good little sharp paper scissors or a craft knife and a mat to cut those tabs. You definitely don't want to punch those out or pull them with your fingers because you will ruin something. So it's very nice because then you can get them uh, double use out of your stencil. Here's another another um, version. This is another one of Diane Reevely's stencils and masks. This one happens to be 9 by 12. So they come in different sizes again which is really nice because then you have versatility with what you want to create. Here's another company that um, you might not be familiar with. I'm going to show it to you over here. This is the Fred Mullet Company. You can see the name right here, Fred B. Mullet Company.com. 
and these are let's see if I can get this where you can see get the shine off of it for you these are four individual stencils and masks and that's how his his are packaged so I want to show you kind of one of the cool things about how you can use those this is one of his stencils and masks and he calls these the three-way um, the three-way series that's what these are called and what you can do is first of all you can use this as a uh, as a stencil so you could put this on a piece and put it on your um, art journal or what have you and you could spray ink through it you could sponge paint through it you could do a variety of things or you could have a background down and you could put the mask over it and you could spray over the top of it the mask would protect whatever it was was below it or you can use it as an auditioning tool and because any ma any stencil that's set up like this with a single image that size the way you want it you can do this so you can use this stencil and you can move this around on your paper or your pattern paper or whatever to take a look and see oh this is where this is what I want to have um, this section is what I want to have for my card for example so you know that's what you're going to showcase in your card so you can mark around it cut it out or you could mark inside this shape and if you cut the mask part out of a different shape then you know you have a placement guide so you have cut out the the outer dimension you've marked the inner shape you've cut this out of a different paper and you know exactly where it's going to go on your card front so it's just a it's an interesting really interesting uh, concept that he has there then of course you can make your own stencils and masks and if you have an electronic cutting machine one of my friends Pavla has an electro electronic cutting machine and boy can she cut stencils let me just tell you and intricate beautiful stencils these are cut on some kind of plastic um, material that I think you use for uh, plastic file folders and of course if you have a, one of the cutting machines you can cut different sizes and shapes and so forth you can also if you have a cutting machine that's not electronic let's say you have one that is a um, a manual die cutting machine then you can cut things with your manual die cutting machine this is just a piece of cardstock that you can use as a stencil now this because it's this is cardstock is not going to last long term but depending on your machine you might be able to cut this out of plastic as well so if you have a manual machine you can do that another material you can use to cut your own stencils is freezer paper and that's what this is so this is a couple of layers of freezer paper paper that I ironed together and then I used a foam stamp I stamped it on my freezer paper and then cut out the shapes with a um, craft knife and then that makes I mean it's not a, a stencil that's gonna last forever but it does it does a pretty nice job for uh, scraping gesso or um, texture paste and that kind of thing through for an art journal page or whatever so you can do it with freezer paper you can cut your own you also of course can cut your own out of plastic so you can buy the sheets of the stencil plastic um, let's go back to this one so you can buy the blank sheets of the stencil plastic like this and then you can use a hot knife and you can actually cut hand cut the designs out using a hot knife stencil knife so paper plastic you can also cut them out of Tyvek so this is a Tyvek piece of Tyvek this comes from an envelope a mailing envelope or also you can get Tyvek from the housing industry and this one is actually from the construction industry this is used to wrap houses with and I'm not burning it I'm just cutting it and so it's perfectly safe to use and so I just drew wonky stars on here with a pencil or a pen and then I cut them out with a craft knife and then I saved the wonky stars and so all of those little stars then have become masks that I can use as well but Tyvek is a virtually indestructible material 
they that's why they use it in mailing envelopes those ones that feel like plastic but you're not quite sure what it is it's probably Tyvek and it works really well it's very thin this is one that I've used on my mono printing plates it's thin so it just lays down totally flat to the plate but it is uh, it lasts forever now you can you can fold it and crease it and it is subject to that but it is not subject so much to tearing and of course you can make Tyvek shapes all different kinds of shapes so these are some uh, just some long triangles I did and I made use these when I was doing Christmas cards one year these are out of Tyvek and I use those to print with my mono printing plate and simple shapes works really well these are some more that I created and these are just circles and rings and clouds again these were specifically done for using with the, the mono printing plates and they sometimes they stick together a little bit but they come right uh, come right apart the paint does release this is what the Tyvek looks like before anything's been done to it this is the middle of one of the shapes here are some cloud shapes that I cut out and they're just fun these are fun masks to use I especially love using them when I am mono printing that they are durable extremely durable and um, last a long a long time and I like them that they're so thin that's one of the cool things about using them is they're so thin now you can also cut your own stencils with a craft knife and a piece of um, oh, mixed media paper or bristol paper or something like that so here is a stencil I created and I hand cut this with a craft knife it's pretty detailed but it really didn't take all, as much time as it looks like it would have taken to do that and then putting that down on top of a background I sprayed black just black paint spray paint through it and that's what it looks like and here's a larger version of it it wasn't enough that I did it once I had to do it again <laughs> because I thought the first one was too small so I did it again and this is the resulting image so that's me in case you can't tell and let's see I've got one I think I've got one more here to show you same kind of thing this is the stencil so this is the stencil and I just used the photograph that I used and ran it through Photoshop in order to make it a uh, turn it into some sort of a I, I can't remember exactly what I did to it to tell you the truth but I used ran it through something in Photoshop to get all of that black and white and then spraying through it with black spray paint that's what it looks like here's another one just so you can see what they look like but they're fun to do time-consuming but fun so you can make your own stencils you also can find stencils so these are not intended to be necessarily used in art these are in the office supply or architecture engineering drafting area of craft stores where I found these these are pretty fun to use in your art journals or um, different artistic applications different kinds of shapes this one came through the kit from the kids department this is by the Crayola company and so you get all different kinds of circles and as well as a, a semicircle and this is probably one of my favorites this again comes from the drafting department or the office supply store all these different circles that you can either use to um, you could use an airbrush and you could spray through the circles with an airbrush you could draw through them you could spray ink through them you do all kinds of things this is one of my favorite stencils don't forget to check out sections in craft stores that are different than you might think that you'd find supplies in this is plastic canvas found in the needlework section of a craft store also plastic canvas that I cut out a heart shape plastic canvas comes in different uh, different shapes this one happened to be just a circle I cut the circle out of the middle so now I have a small circle and a ring more found objects this was from my dehydrator one of the trays of my dehydrator I didn't need so we cut it apart 
and I just use this as a stencil, which is great. Doilies. These are a fabric doily, another fabric doily. These are just old craft store variety doilies. Make great masks to spray over. This is a paper doily. Now this one doesn't last forever because it is paper, but it will last quite a while. And then when it starts to disintegrate, you can use it as collage fodder in an art journal. This is a piece of plastic um, doily. This was part of a table runner, I believe. These used to be, when I was a little bitty girl, these were used on, um, very commonly people would put these on their dressers and their tables and things. And uh, you don't see them quite as much now, but it's plastic and it's perfect for using, you know, with all different kinds of art applications because it doesn't disintegrate, but it looks just like the fabric ones. Some more kinds of found stencils would include things like the pieces that you might tear off of paper. This is from a perforated journal. So this is the part that goes around the spiral rings. The page was perforated, so I just put, tore it off. These make great things for using in your art journals to spray over or sponge over. You can also find ribbon. Sometimes it has interesting designs that make a great addition to your stencil collection. And then when you look around outside your house or any other kinds of places, you might find things like this. This is a piece of gutter guard that prevents the leaves from getting down into your gutters. But look at that cool pattern. And then this one, this piece is, um, this is shelf liner. And it's to put in your cabinets so that your dishes don't slip around. And this one obviously needs to be soaked and cleaned because I've clogged up a bunch of the holes with paint. You can see over here, you can't even see through the, the, the material anymore. So this one needs a good cleaning. But this really does. This gives you some great texture and, some, and more stencil options. Some of the tools used with stencils, of course, stencil brushes. Those work really well. Stencil brushes come in all different sizes. And you work when you're working with a stencil brush, you work with it pretty dry. So you pick up a little bit of paint, get rid of most of it, and then um, most of the time you apply the paint with a circular motion. More commonly than stencil brushes, I tend to use a um, makeup sponge. So these you can get in discount stores in a great big package. and um, I usually use it this way so that I don't get so many harsh edges, square edges when I'm working with the paint. What kinds of things can you use that with? You can use craft paint or heavy body acrylic paint. You can use whatever you like to use. Um, those are my favorite things. You can also use things like Inca Gold. This is a metallic rub or um, any other or metallic paints are wonderful. Anything like that works great. You can use those through stencils. Of course, you can spray inks or dyes through stencils. And forgot to get this. You can use things like modeling paste or molding paste through your stencils to provide texture. And I'll show you a couple of examples of that in just a second. OK, so let me show you some of those examples. Here is, this is a, um, this is actually like a binder kind of a, um, this was a pre-made thing. So it's like a binder folder kind of, I don't, I don't remember what the name of it was, to tell you the truth, the honest truth. But it's made out of canvas and it was all, I purchased it this way. And so this was just all kinds of stencils. There's spray inks through stencils. There's paint through stencils. Um, I have used... There's texture on here, which is some of them are down in this section. Some of this is gel medium that's been scraped through a stencil. Sometimes I've scraped paint and texture paste through stencils. And so there, it's just a variety of, it's like, it's like an exercise in how many things can I figure out to do with a stencil. So that's what this whole thing is. A lot of texture up in here. So it's just, you know, it's fun to do a project where you think 
give yourself an assignment and you go, how many ways can I use a stencil on this thing and nothing else? So that is what that little project is. I told you that you could spray or scrape things through your stencils. Here's a few ideas for that. This is modeling paste through the stencil. And so I spray, scraped it over the whole thing and then I came back with paint on part of it just so you could see the reveal and how it shows up. And this was a dirty stencil, by the way. That's why it looks like that. <laughs> Here is um, the paste. Some of the stencil, or the... Um, like light molding paste like this, colored with paint. Um, this one is Liquitex Basics molding paste. So these were just different tests to see what things would look like when I scraped them through the same stencil. This is matte medium. So this is much flatter, but this is matte medium. Um, this is more like this is more like a gel medium. This is uh, matte medium is pretty fluid. This is more the consistency of a a gel medium that but it was called matte medium but it has some it's not real fluid is the point if it's very fluid it will flow under the stencil and this is gesso you can get gesso in different thicknesses and gesso is a nice product to scrape through the stencils to give you some interesting texture as well so those are just some some examples of testing out different kinds of things through the same stencil and one final thing to show you, this is an art journal page. This has some kind of paste. I don't remember what it was I used. Scraped through stencils. And it has a couple of different stencils. I don't even know what this one is over here. This one is flowers from um, Crafter's Workshop. There's some numbers through Crafter's Workshop stencil. Again, more flowers. And then I think this must have been the same uh, number stencil over here. So those are with one of one texture product or another. I don't know which one. And then I came over the top of those when it was fully dry and picked up some of the edges with some of the metallic rubs to get that to show up. And then on the other side of this page, um, on this particular page, uh, everything you see here, this is all some sort of texture paste scraped through the stencils. These words, those are also scraped through the uh, stencil. And then just a variety of colors of paint and inks and whatever over the top of it to give it, to color it. So that, I think you'll agree with me, proves my point that I indeed am addicted to stencils. And after you watch this, I'm afraid you could be too. <laughs> if you are, my apologies. Not really, because they're really fun. And you'll have a good time learning how to use your stencils. If you have a stencil collection and you haven't, um, you know, really fully explored it, hey, get them out and have fun with them because they are a really creative tool. And I know you're going to have fun with them. So speaking of fun... Come on over to HowToGetCreative.com. We're a membership website. We'd love to have you come over there and check us out. Check out our Mandala Madness course. Also, we have another course called Mining Your Muse. Love to have you come over and check us out and spend some time over at HowToGetCreative.com. Remember to get creative today because you know it's easy. I'm Barb, and I'll see you again soon.